It's so important um, for how Astraeris like to play. But I liked Astraeris opening, I would say, maybe slightly more. I think this Phoenix here is busted. So, yeah. I think it could be interesting to see whether the clock plays three or five as well. I know LWW loves playing this hero as a five, so that's where I would kind of look at most. Mm -hmm. Dire team pick. And I didn't even think about it, but this tiny first pick from Blaze that they've done in all three games kind of covers themselves against the Brood as well that they knew Astraeris would like. Which is interesting. And they go Mars. Okay. Obviously very good with the Phoenix. Nothing needs to be said here. I think we've all heard it a hundred times before in casts. <laughs> Five seconds remaining. I will say though, they have really good catch now. Between the Mars and the Clockwork. And I love the Mars Phoenix lane as well. Dyer I think it's so much fun to play. Whoa. Ooh, Ooh. Okay. Yo. I hate playing against this hero. I played a solo game last night where I was Sven. And the enemy post 5 Warlock basically one versus 5 dust. One versus 5 dust. He got a Midas and we didn't take Max quickly enough. And then he got Refresher with Ags and uh, just made my game so sad. It was awful. So we do get the Drow, which I think we've seen banned a bunch. Yeah, the Drow pick's interesting. It, it hasn't been picked a huge amount, but Astraeris like this pick a lot. They picked it in their last series against FTD, I'm pretty sure. I'll go and double check on that. Yeah, they picked it in that game too with the Brood Mother. And they had a Slardar position three for their three cores. But they like this hero a lot. Um, I think it's okay. I think the Gust is really good against all these three heroes so far. I think it lanes well with the Clockwork. I don't know how strong it is in its own right. If they like the hero, Radiant team. I thought people would pick it mostly against like TB and stuff mm -hmm. because it pierces the base armor with the marksmanship procs. But I guess they can play tempo this game really well, though. And the AM versus Drow matchup is really weird because Drow's really strong early on um, until the AM gets Manta because you have the gust. But eventually, what happens is the AM just gets on top of the Drow and kills her. Because she can't stop him from just blinking onto her. Because if if she ever uses Gust, he just pops up uh, Manta and blinks in again and just hits the drow. Ten so it'll be interesting to see what they pick last, I think, on Asteroids to try and deal with this AM. I'm pretty sure this hero got second phase banned in game one and two as well. So interesting to see that it gets put through here for the first time. Mm. Dire team back. Radiant team pick. So they need what I'm assuming is a mid laner, because I think you put the Visage 3 Tiny 4, unless they do some wild, wacky things. They don't... Mm, they could probably do with a little bit more catch on Blaze. Ten seconds remaining. Uh... Five they could, could they go like remaining. Ember? Is Ember banned? Ember's a bit rough against Drow as well, but I feel like it gives them that catch that they lack. Yeah, they but can if kind you of get do gusted, like, aren't you in trouble? Yeah, but you can you can itemize for it eventually, right? Mm. It's still just a good hero. I, I think they could also do with an egg hitter though as well would be nice, because <laughs> at the moment when this egg goes down, they kind of like what's the tiny gonna do? Run in and hit it? Like AM has to blink on top, which he doesn't want to commit for the egg because then he's used his blink. So I'm trying to think what heroes are left that they could pick. Maybe they could pick like Beastmaster offlane or something. And then put the Visage mid. But it doesn't sound great. I want to see Sanking actually. That sounds fun. Doom isn't banned. Could it's gone completely. It, it's been ignored the whole draft. 
You could throw a mid, right? Yeah, I'd like Doom for Blaze. I think Doom's... Uh, but again, they have no egg hitter. It's that problem. Maybe, like, Lena's okay? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, they, yeah. they do go to the Ember. I think the Ember's better. It allows them to play the mid game much easier. And it's the it's all the good AoE damage with the Warlock Fatal Bonds as well. Which I really like, actually. Um, I'd like to see a Kunkka for Aster Ares, please. If I get both the mid heroes, I'd be very excited. Like Jar's like standing behind the shield, like, hello, I am here. <laughs> yeah, like just barely peeping out. Yeah. You guys see me, right? Please? They could go like some raw damage here, like, is TA banned? No, it's not. I mean, TA's not awful. Because the AM hates playing against that hero as well in the like the mid game. Another so they, have, they would have like. A, uh, gust. Yeah, they would have the like roast taking potential as well with the draw on the TA on Aster Ares, mm -hmm. which would be really strong. That allows them to play this tempo time like timing they have in the game. I think Kunker or TA would be my my two choices. What other else is in? The, I mean, Queen of Pain's banned. Mid Doom. Maybe maybe Death Prophet. Yeah, they could pick Doom. I don't know how much I like it though. Just gonna keep it's suggesting okay. that. It's okay. What about like Veno mid? Sounds fun. <laughs> Disgusting, but fun. Viper? I mean, they could pick Viper. Wouldn't be awful. Templar, a yeah, there's a T8. Hero. Something, something if I get both mids right. To be fair, I said Kunkka first, so I don't know if I can be 100% happy with that. I think you got it. I think it works. TA was second choice. Chat, are we going to allow it? Press 1 for allowing it. Press 2 for not. Oh, I forgot about the press 1s and 2s. Oh, no. Twitch have been like, where's our interaction? Right, I'm going to have to do loads to make up for it in this game 3. <laughs> Thanks for getting us. Thank, thanks for getting the ball rolling, B Cop. I, I try, you know. I you're you're try. a savior. Yeah, I like this uh, Astoraris lineup, but I think the Warlock's the key hero for Blaze. I think if the Warlock gets good spells off, I think that it makes their team fighting so much easier. Like they need a good Fatal Bonds, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I think the AM should have a pretty good lane against the Mars because he has the Warlock healing him constantly. I feel... So the Visage is the three, right? Yeah, Beyond's playing the Visage. So it's Drow. Against... I mean, Visage Tiny's crazy, though. Who's the five with the Drow? Is it the... Yeah, it's the Clockwork. Hmm. This Clockwork has to be so careful with this positioning. Because mm -hmm. when they hit level two on the, um, on the Radiant side, this Tiny Visage can just blow people up. It's crazy. Yeah, and this is the standard Vist Joff lane. You start with three mangoes and you just start stabbing W on people. That's ridiculous. Still wishing we would see more of that Visage Grimstroke. Because Grim was kind of coming back into the mix. Mm hmm. And all I want is the Visage Grimstroke. That combination, that Soul Assumption combination is disgusting and even the combination in lane is really good oh i would have liked to have seen the clockwork start bot lane oh uh, i think they could have yeah punished this warlock or something and they're all just all chatting again i love it i'm assuming they're good friends because i think it's been these two all the time maybe they're like swore mortal enemies and they're like swearing at each other right now but i would never know <laughs> but I like I'd like to see the positives in people, B Cup. What positive do you see in me? So coming into game three. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I'll message CC and see you later. <laughs> yeah. see, see if he'll come cast with me. They get uh, three bounty runes on the dire side, which is nice. Nice for them. Hmm. So, let's see who's going to win the laning phase this time. Because it's been Blaze both times, right? Yeah, but I think they've had the better laning stage both times. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They've been so, but like the heroes team. to be able to do it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't clarify that very well. Sorry. <laughs> Not exactly. I think a lot of it comes down to the mid lanes. I think the TA Ember matchup is very volatile. It can go both ways because when you have Flame Guard up, you're really strong because the TA has no way of taking Flame Guard off. But yeah, very skill based this one. Ember taking some damage. I know, it felt like a lot of heroes on the radiant side were taking a bunch of damage real quick. Wasn't exactly sure what was going on. And also, <laughs> I don't know if I was just lagging, but battery assault seemed to last forever. Denied. But. Maybe, maybe, imagine if you were in a game and that happened, where battery assault just never turned off. That would, that would yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, they blocked the small camp up in the top lane, top lane with the sentry ward. So, it feels real good for, uh, I was going to say IG Vitality, because that's what IG, the Beyond's tag is, but that's not mm -hmm. what I mean to say at all for Blaze. Because now this clock can't use the uh, small can't pull at all. I assume he's got a sentry coming out. Oh, he actually doesn't. He has an obs coming out. Okay. Where are these words for mid? Right above each other. So they've been placing them more north for both teams recently. We, I think in the beginning of the event, or maybe it was just the Southeast Asia side, what, we were seeing the cliff. Searing chains going after the TA. Under the tower, too. So Phoenix taking a lot of damage. But nothing to follow up with. I mean, Ember's winning this lane at the moment, which I think he has to in these early levels. It gets a lot more difficult as the matchup goes on. Mm -hmm. But when he hits level 6, he has really good kill potential because the Flame Guard takes off the refraction charges straight away. <laughs> Cogs. Soul Assumption throw and Avalanche comes in on a two. Now they've got the toss up onto the Drow and Soul Assumption yeah, again uh, to get the kill. It's the level two, and now Visage is level three as well, so I'm gonna get assume he's gonna get a second point in Soul Assumption. And it's gonna get bonkers up in this top lane now. I think this this second point in Soul Assumption is crazy, which I sh please put it in, otherwise I'm gonna sound like a right idiot now. Hold till four. He might be waiting to see if he needs the point in Grave Chill for a kill. And then four, you just, what, one, two, one? Regardless. Yeah. It's, the time he's going to refill the bottle of the Ember mid, which is nice. I think you go... Oh, he actually went for Grave Chill. Strau is not doing well. No, no. No, she's struggling. But th there is another, this big wave coming into tower. So when the wave's been cleaned up, she's going to have caught up again. Mm-hmm. Radiance courier has been killed. Ooh. Dyer's courier. Has Killing been that killed. anti mage courier. Did it, what did it have on it? Do we know? Wraith band. Yeah, yeah. it's probably a second wraith band, isn't it? Yeah. But no, it was so the, now just what? The recipe. So now what happens is the mouse can't use his spells in this bot lane anymore. Battery because salt, of... cogs, toss out of the cogs, soul assumption thrown to the drow. And they've got quite a bit of damage, but not enough yet. And Visage just wants to stay up on this because he's got another Mango and yeah. throws the Soul Assumption and gets the kill there on to the Drow once more. Maybe I should learn offlane Visage. It looks this really looks good. Fun. It's just going to come down to me being garbage with the familiars. And Cogs again. Icarus dive over. Yeah, Rico's was... here. LWW, Battery Assault. The damage kills the Tiny. Now look for this visage. Ooh, the spirits. Yeah, that's a double kill for Rico. 
Okay, great rotation by him. That's a lot of XP coming their way as well. Now Clockworks level 4. Unfortunately, the Drow misses all of it, and they're still a little bit behind, but that's fine. She can catch up. Yeah, I thought that was a very ambitious toss in the first place, though. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Hmm. Good way to get it back there for Aster Ares, but the Drow again still struggling. Avalanche toss. Top lane. Cogs around the tiny soul assumption, getting ready to be thrown. Damage out onto the Drow. But this time doesn't die so quickly. Icarus dive over and the soul assumption won't be enough. They get another two kills up in this top lane. Yeah, I love this rotation from Rico. Like they get the two kills before, but he sticks around. They know they can't really pressure the AM down in the spot lane anymore because the Mars never has mana. He decided not to go soul ring, which I don't really understand when you're playing against an AM. Mm -hmm. But he went for the bottle instead. And uh, the AM's just free farming away down in the bot lane because if he ever gets in trouble he just gets a warlock heal she is really doing well after that harassment over mid a couple minutes ago we didn't actually talk about the four minute rune because we were looking towards top quite a bit with this visage yeah he got the four minute regen rune on ember <laughs> and then uh there was a six minute invis rune that he's managed to take as well. So Ember definitely has rune control over TA though, because you can throw the remnant to one rune and run to the other. And then if the TA doesn't instantly pick one up, then you just snag it for yourself. I think the thing we have to mention is this visage, even though it's fallen behind in net worth a little bit, it still does such a huge amount when it hits this level six. Mm hmm. Phoenix still coming back towards mid, so Tiny might just be in oh. trouble again. Cogs are there, and yeah. Ember, so, though. Ember coming in, running forward, oh searing chains on it too. The damage is heavy. Is it enough? Soul Assumption kills off the Drown. They get the gun of the Tiny Phoenix now. The next target, and Soul Assumption. You just see the damage that it does. It's very really disgusting. I am surprised he hasn't taken a second point in it though before level six. Maybe he goes four one four then. Because, uh, like, I'm not a Visage player, so I don't really understand how you would want to level the hero. Maybe mm -hmm. that's my new hero in pubs to spam, so I can just so I can understand it. Do you know what I go through my... I've been playing Tree in pubs recently, because I, I was really interested to see the skill build and things, how it worked in games. Maybe I should play Visage. Maybe. You gotta, you gotta tell me how the... Because uh, I remember you used to tell me your... Microwing well, wasn't good. Yeah, I was gonna say I can tell you how it's gonna go because my micro is awful. But yeah, so well, you were telling me about your time with playing Nature's Prophet. Oh yeah, don't yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> I played a game once and went four four zero because I couldn't be bothered to micro the trees. No trees, no trees. Nature's Prophet. Yeah, don't need the micro. It's great because you can sprout more in lane to get the extra regen for tangas. Because sprout gives you more. Uh, Tango region. TP bottom. Mars is under the tower and oh, the spear it. lands. Okay, so it hits the cliff. He has the DD as well, so that could have been a lot of damage coming the way of uh, Ares. They need this level 6 on the Clockwork and the Phoenix, which they're going to get at the 10 minute mark, but if they can get it just before, it would feel really good. I think that the, the egg and the hook are so important to be able to play together with. Because mm -hmm. it's so much of their team fight, because they can't really use this arena properly on the Mars until they have the egg. Because they they need the like the raw combo, and then the hook shot just enables that team fight to set up in the first place. Hmm. Rico's getting close to six too. It seems like they're just gonna hit this six at the same time. Mm-hmm. Just both the Clockwork and the Phoenix. They're going on the uh, TA here. Kaz ends up dead. They've Phoenix got no... Is... What? Okay. No detection. 
can't smoke mid against a TA and not bring detection with you guys. Yeah, that's... It's not going to work. Yeah. Do you reckon Ember's like, yo, do you have detection? He's like, no, do you have detection? No. Oh. So how are we going to get this kill? <laughs> Stop asking me questions I can't answer. <laughs> oh, okay. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. TSA uh, close to the Deso. AMCP bot here. This is a. They want the drow with the uh, tiny coming in. Hook shot. Oh, they missed. I'm just gonna Ooh. lose the drow. If they hit the hook shot there, I don't think they get the follow up toss onto her. Oh, that's a that's a costly mistake. But again, very good for the AM. And for the Tiny. Tiny gets the gold. So he's on his way to the blink. Halfway there. So a bit of miscues from both sides. So far. At least for now. It's fine. Dyer's top tower Seems is fine. Attack. Icarus dive over, Supernova, and the Chaotic Offerings down from Kaz, but he's very dead, and that Supernova will pop. They've got the arena around the Visage, and he's got the Spear in three seconds. It won't oh, be needed if they get the kill on a Beyond, and they're all for the Familiars. They'll get one. Did they get a second? Uh, yeah, I think they got both of them. 200 gold extra. It's like another kill. A 1k lead for Asteris. I wonder what item uh, Ember goes for as well here. He could go drums, he could go Maelstrom if he feels like he needs to scale a little bit better. Could go Yules, I guess. It's quite good against the Drow for the Perch. Mm -hmm. shot hits onto the Tiny. But see the Soul Assumption. I don't know if it's enough to deter the Drow anymore. At least at the moment. Cursed. Clockwork's got hook shot in 30 seconds, so that'll be a little while. Spirit Vessel being built for the Phoenix. Mars is going Yule's blink. Okay. I wonder why he has two points in dive on the Phoenix. I'm pretty sure religiously we've seen 1-4-4 four, four from these position 4s. We've seen the Neon position 5 go 1-2-4 mm -hmm. and go max Sunray before Spirits, but I don't think we've ever seen more than one point in dive. So the entire time AM is kind of free farming. Doesn't have the battle fury quite yet, but the timing should be pretty decent regardless, as long as he stays alive. Yeah, I mean he's he's gonna get it at the 14 minute mark, which is really good. So he just mana voids the creep, right? Okay. You know what? Hell yeah. You mana void creeps K11. You need that battle fury timing. I get it. All these haters trying to bring you down. Doesn't even like magic. Doesn't want to use it on heroes. He's going to be farming anyway. I like that he's playing the top half of the map, though. Like, you know that the dire side are going to want to control this bottom area right now. The tiny can take the unsafe farm in the bot lane. And then the AM just takes the safer farm on the map in the top half. Yeah, clean more after this camp. Oh, unfortunately, he doesn't have mana void up, so. Comes out a little bit slower. Does TA have blink deso now? Yeah, she does. I think this is a big timing now for the dire side. She's a little bit ahead of everybody else in the game. And AM can't fight her when he has Battle Fury. So they need to make the most of this uh, blink deso timing. I assume they're going to smoke up. Does anybody have one? Is the Phoenix coming in with a smoke? Yeah, he is. 
Oh, the smoke gets broken. They're going to look towards me at LWW. Avalanche toss. They get the kill on the clockwork, but not before he gets the hook shot off. Good Supernova's egg. there, and now they get the kill on the Kaz. Egg. Will it get off? Yes, it will. Three die. Visage next. Four dead. Triple kill for Phoenix. I can, uh, Blaze don't know that the TAS blink as well as the Dessa now, so they're like, okay, well, we need to try and take a good fight just before she gets it. And this, But this is what I meant by the egg. When Rico commits egg, they have no egg hitters in the fight. So it takes them so long to do anything to it. And everybody dies except from the Ember, who's trying to hit the egg, who gets speared to the arena wall. Mm -hmm. And even a level one egg in front of four heroes is able to go off. And that's a problem. But that's a huge problem. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. If the Phoenix egg dies there, it's not a big deal because they still all die. But the fact it goes off is going to say a lot about how the rest of this game goes, I think, with uh, in terms of the egg. Boom, there it goes. So 3k lead. They really want this mid tier one on Blaze as well. I mean, Visage is level nine. Phoenix is level eleven. Visage is level nine. Tiny's level nine. What's the XP difference? It must be huge. Yeah, it's like six thousand. Jeez. Almost seven and a half. Wow. Yeah. That's 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 huge. Oh yeah. It's level two on ults for some of these but, heroes. Yeah, for for the dire side especially because their their heroes are so level dependent, like the Phoenix. Like level two egg is such a big increase in team mm -hmm. fight. Going from six to eight attacks with a lineup that doesn't hit egg well. It's going to feel great. I'm surprised they're not trying to use this TA blink more, though. I think they should be trying to be more active here. Because well, this, he... AM, this AM isn't a hero right now, so they can take fights four versus five. Mm -hmm. Or five versus four, sorry, on Dyer's side. He's almost got his BKB, to be fair. So we'll have to see. Yeah, I guess so, but... Hmm. Yeah, I guess the BKB is a big item this game against Warlock, Tiny, Ember, Visage. Because AM's not a hero, it's all magical right now. So, I, yeah, okay, I can understand that. They'll probably look to try and take the Roche then when the BKB comes up, or at least force the Roche fight. Maybe get a pick off before they head in, kind of thing. Does he have Greaves coming out on the... Yeah, he does, on the Visage. Okay. So he's pretty strong now. But he doesn't have any stat items. Like, he has no drums or anything, or Bracer. So he, have Gre he has Greaves, which is nice. He has Wand, but his inventory looks a little bit bare to me. <laughs> yeah, we saw the Greaves on the Visage last game. And that was a four-position Visage. Three and four visage is kind of similar though, because it's a really greedy four. Yeah. So you, you kind of build the same items anyway, like the, the medallions or how people used to get Helm of Dawn, but you don't really see that anymore because you want the utility of both. Hitting Ooh. the tiny and the cogs now. Avalanche comes through, but eventually, oh god, Melt Strike is what does him in. Uh, there's a Grove Bow on the TA as well, and Clockwork finds the ward with the rocket flare, giving vision on the high ground, so. But again, like the AM's just been farming these last four or five minutes because they haven't done anything on the dire side and they're missing a huge timing. And the AM almost has Manta now. I think he's got the gold for it. So that in the time the time between AM getting Battle Fury and Manta, they've taken one fight on the dire side that wasn't their own initiation. Mm. Which I think is a problem. He's going to go back for the Halberd now on the AM, which I really like. He has to go uh, Manta before SMY on AM this game because he's playing against Drow. So he needs that Manta online as soon as possible. So where we normally see the SMY into the into the the, uh, di the dismantle, effectively, right? To get the Manta. He can't afford to spend gold on the Sanj this game early on. 
That was like a God King kind of thing. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of players do that now, though. Was he the one who started that? Or... Because that's think, who I, uh, it comes to mind when I think of it. I mean, people have done it before. He, he, you know, he wasn't the first person to ever do it, but yeah. I think he was the first person that started doing it like consistently in his games. They just Roche so quickly. Listen, yeah, so they get the beacon here, they just force the Roche fight, which is 100% the right thing to do. But you've allowed the AM to catch up. And the fact that they're keeping the net worth even... Look shot. Coming through. I think it hit the familiars, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. But yeah, the fact that they're keeping the net worth even on the uh, Radiant side, even pulling slightly ahead in the last few minutes, Radiant is really good for them considering how strong the die lineup is. But they get the Aegis now, they have their Beaker Bees, and I think. Oh, they, they've they just got Blink on Mars. Okay, he's just bought it. It's coming out on the Courier. So they have the, like, the jump now with the initiation. Mm hmm. So they need to just start running down lanes. It's going to be up to AM to try and split push them up to try and force them back. Like at the moment, he needs to be trying to hit that bot tier 2, I think. TA again, mid tier 2. And TA going Daedalus next. I mean, has so much farm at this point. Again, anti Mage does have a close to similar net worth, but the effect of net worth or the itemization on TA just feels more powerful at this exact moment. I actually think when this AM gets Halberd Scardi, he's insanely strong this game. Mm -hmm. Because the 50% range slow against the TA and the Drow is going to make them so hard for them to play. The only thing I will say is I worry about his supporting cast. Have we seen a Golem like all game? I think there was one. One right? top. One if the time. AM compl if AM's manages to survive the fights, he's going to do so much damage to this drowned TA. And when he pops his Manta and gets the Scardi on them, they can't really do anything. They have to sit there and fight. So it's going to be up to the Mars and the Phoenix versus like the Warlock Tiny Visage, effectively. And I think the um, the Phoenix Mars kind of come out ahead in there. Oh my god, he's oh blinked. Oh my, anti mage, he just blinked. Now the arena's down, and they've got the chaotic they've offering. Supernova comes in, it's in an odd spot, that's they for sure, the but they can't kill the egg. Down goes the warlock, visage will follow, Ember's in trouble, and anti mage, you see, he just has to leave. He's hit by the cogs, and he's on the run, but he ends up dead. This wasn't a surprise Phoenix pick. No, they first phased it. Jeez. Jesus. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And now they're going to take the bot tier two as well. Yeah, the game's going to explode after that fight, Radiant's I think. Bottom tower has fallen. Because again, the AM's really strong in his own right, but this visage isn't really a hero right now. The Ember's gone for this really defensive build so he's not really doing any damage he's got he's, I mean he's got Radiance Axe queued up next on Ember but he's so far away he's got four, 500 gold like this Phoenix is basically becoming another core for the team because of how much work it can do in fights because the egg can't die it's almost got Shivas yeah like the Shivas is going to make it even harder to kill the arena egg arena down bottom and they've got the toss but the spear hits onto the tower onto the visage they get the cone of the tiny guardian groups will only do so much right clicks coming in beyond on the run lotus orb will do nothing to keep him alive and now they go for the bottom tier three they get the one of the birds as well i think both of them are dead now they're going to try and spear the ember to the thing oh. a little bit slow I feel like if you buy Yules on Mars, you have no excuse to ever miss a spear. I, I know that's a bit harsh, but... I'm set of racks and just going for me to, like, AM's just still farming. Yeah, but there's nothing they can do. They can't fight into them. There's eggs still up as well. Oh god, Warlock dies so fast. But why is Warlock standing there? There's no need. Ember, he ends up taking the Aegis away, but he's I dead mean, he and so is the Tiny. 
Oh, the smoke! Oh. The smoke <laughs> just saved him! Anti mage? Oh, smoke. I'm pretty certain they just saw him. Look, look at, at the sun, sun ray. Hit the spa, guys. Hit the showers. Look at Let's the efficiency. Go. Actually, yeah, I was going to say, I think they can just go in again. I, know, I was a little bit late saying Arena it. Arena spear and the kill onto the visage. Anti mage can only just watch. You know, fair play to us, the Ares. I thought they should have pushed their, their timing harder, but... You know, full credit to them. They they were patient. They waited until the TA got BKB. They knew what they wanted to do. They got the Roche. And they just went. They didn't play it over-aggressively. Like, where, you know how we see in SEA, a lot of the teams just fight non-stop, even if it's not good for them? You know, mm -hmm. people criticize the, the China games that we've had in this tournament because they've been slow, but they're so methodical. And... Although we've been talking about the SEA games being so much more of a bloodbath, it would be so interesting to see how the clash of styles when they come together, who comes out into like on top. And I wonder if either region adjusts slightly, or like because if one region starts to adjust to the other one's style, it feels like you're giving them the advantage because they would know how to play that style more. Or better. Most likely. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I love that from Ares though. They try and protect their uh, their high ground as much as possible on the top side. Mm -hmm. With only one Rax remaining. This AM needs to get the Scardi. And even then, I think they lack damage massively. At this point in the game, at least. It was fine if he would have got it before, a little bit earlier. But... Yeah. He had to come back and defend and wasn't farming in the time. So what does the anti mage have now? Same with the Scardi, but we'll see if that ends up being enough. Ooh. They give the Titans to the, to the Mars. Okay. Mindbreaker to the Drow. What does TA have? Does she still have Grove Bow? Yeah. Ooh. Dyer's bottom tower I guess that kind of sorts their damage issues a little bit. Because with Slight, he can apply the orb to everybody, right? Which mm -hmm. is which is nice. Telescope picked up too. They get. They give the telescope to the warlock. He has medallion and an ogre club. He's trying to build him towards an ag, so I don't think he's ever going to get there. Illusion. And look how patient they are. They're just waiting for the second roche before they do anything. This is crazy. <laughs> Not crazy in a bad sense, but like... After casting the SEA games yesterday... Where it's an absolute bloodbath. Are they actually giving the, are they giving the DD to the Drow? They are. And it's a long Roche spawn. Yeah. Do you, How long do you think they wait for the entire Roche duration? Or do they yeah, just go? I think they're going to wait for the second Aegis. 100%. I don't know why Mars is in the pit. Because they have a trap down. So he's kind of just chilling out there for no reason. It's just moonwalking. <laughs> okay, he's actually just loving life right now. This Mars. He's just, he's just vibing. All right. Oh, he and... broke the smoke. <laughs> yeah, he's now, like, oh my now, god. Oh. So for steering chains, BKB has been popping the Mars spear. It hit and Edge just did so fast. Oh, yeah, Supernova cool. comes in, and GG's called immediately after the AM dies. Wow. I respect that though from the radiant. They have to try and make a play because if they let them get Roche for free, the game's over because they can't kill like the TA or the Drow twice. 